Hi, my name is Mitchell, and I'm a data scientist at Microsoft. You're watching ML Explained by Aggregate Intellect. For more information, check out AI.science. Hi, everyone, and welcome to AI Briefs. Today, we have a super interesting topic, the BERT model, which is an open source machine learning framework used in natural language processing. BERT helps computers understand the meaning of ambiguous language in text by using surrounding text to establish context. So essentially, it trains computers to speak. Today, we have a wonderful guest with us, Mitchell Wong, data scientist at Microsoft, who will be helping us better understand this topic. Hi, Mitchell. Hey, Beer. How's it going? Great. Mitchell, we are so excited to have you here, and you are our first speaker featured in our AI Brief series. That's good to hear. Definitely. Just excited to share the information I have about this exciting and topic. And we are very excited to hear it. So Mitchell, why don't we start off by having you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and your path to your current position at Microsoft. Yeah, so for sure, I'll jump right into it. So my name is Mitchell Wong. I'm currently working as a data scientist at Microsoft. And I, like most data scientists, had a very non-linear path to data science. So I studied engineering physics and I worked research roles in solar cells, also did business roles in mergers and acquisitions, consulting, but eventually moved to a business analyst and then eventually data science role. So that's where I find myself now and in my current role at Microsoft. I explain these technologies to different customers um, and help them understand how to use this technology so they can realize benefits in their business and also what kind of architecture they might need in place in order to enable this technology. I feel like nowadays in every industry, the path is nonlinear, but that's really great that you get the chance to help your customers realize those benefits. So Mitchell, why don't we get started? We keep hearing this term NLP. What is NLP? So that's a great question. What is NLP? So very broadly, NLP stands for natural language processing. And there's two main subcategories, one being natural language understanding and the other being natural language generation. So the main goal of natural language processing is to understand and generate language to the same level as a human so being. So I'm sure this understanding of language is done through some sort of language model. What is a language model? So a language model is essentially a mathematical representation of language, because that's ultimately what computers understand. Now, the main goal of a language model is to predict the next sequence of words. This mathematical representation has two main forms. The first one is the more classical statistical model, which can be a Markov model, for example, which we'll see in the top right. Now, a more modern approach that has been developed is the neural network model, which we can see in the bottom right. Ultimately, the goal of these models is to have a mathematical representation to help us predict the next word. Amazing. So now that we know that language models goal is to help us predict the next words um, through using mathematical representation, how does BERT fit into this? And what is the BERT model? BERT stands for bi-directional encoder representation from transformers. Now there's a lot to unpack here. But BERT is one of the neural network language models. Now, there's two main concepts that I want to outline here. So BERT leverages pre-training and fine-tuning. And why is this important? Essentially, oftentimes when we want to train a model, we don't have that much data. But what BERT does is leverages pre-training by training on Wikipedia and books to understand language in general. Then we can do what is called fine-tuning. So BERT can be used for our specific use case. The other concept I want to introduce is self-attention. So this is an idea that we can use weights and associate one word to different words in the sentence. This helps give the idea of context in a sentence and is really important for BERT. 
and some of the use cases. Amazing. I love this idea of being able to train computers um, to create context and to predict the next word. But one question that comes to mind is, I'm sure there are other models that can also do this. So what differentiates BERT from other models? Yeah, that's a very good question. Why use BERT instead of a different language? Instead of learning a sentence only from left to right or right to left, it is one of the first language models to use neural networks to understand whole sentences in context. And we can break this down through an example here. So the example sentence is LeBron passed the basketball and then it went in. So if we had a forward language model, we would see LeBron passed the and then try to make a prediction there. Now, it could be basketball, but it could also be water bottle or it could be towel, right? Now, if we look at the backward language model, we see, and then it went in. It could be a whole slew of things that precede this. So it could be LeBron shot the ball or someone else passed the ball, right? But when we have a bi-directional model, we can use the whole sentence's context and our prediction becomes a lot better. So LeBron passed the... Amazing. I love this concept of BERT being bi-directional. But like you said, any word can fit that description. So how does BERT know which word to put next and how does it create context? Great question. How does it learn this bi-directional context? So there's two main tasks that BERT is trained on. So one is called MLM, which is Mass Language Model, and the second one is NSP, which is Next Sentence Prediction. Together, training through this method, BERT is able to learn context and language. So in Mass Language Model, what happens is actually it's a hyperparameter that can be selected, and it masks a certain percentage of words in the sentence. So for example, LeBron passed the, and then I'll mask that word. And then in the second sentence, therefore I would consider him a, and then it masks that word. You fill it in with whatever you want, a great player, an all-star, a goat maybe. Um, but essentially mass language model hides certain words so that Bert has to make a prediction on it. The second task is next sentence prediction. So we feed it two sentences and Bert needs to decide whether the first sentence comes before the second sentence. So LeBron passed the basketball and then it went in. Therefore, I would consider him a great player. Now, because we use the word therefore, it might make it a little simpler for the model, but in general, the idea still holds. It's about predicting if the first sentence comes before the second sentence. And together, these two tasks help Bert understand language and context. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And so I'm curious to hear more about how BERT works and how MLM and NSP come into play. Yeah, great question. So how does BERT work and how does it actually train on these? So as we mentioned before, BERT is an encoder-based model that comes from transformers. So just take the encoder part and stack a bunch of them together. But what is actually an encoder? An encoder is actually just a self-attention layer with a feed forward network. And now, when you stack a bunch of these up, you get BERT. And how do you actually train it? So it combines that MLM, mass language model, and next sentence prediction. So we see that basically the first input is states that it's a classification task. Now we feed it the next two sentences with the mass words. The output of BERT will be whether the first sentence comes before the second sentence, so the classification task, and then also it'll output the words with the mass words that it predict. So this is essentially how BERT gets trained and how we can leverage MLM and NSP to give BERT the understanding of context and language. Wow, that is very cool. It's so interesting to see how we're using encoders to train models to start thinking like us. And so my next question that comes to mind is, what is BERT used for? Yes, definitely. Great question, great question. Because 
We've been talking about these encoders and transformers and the architecture of BERT, but what is it actually used for? So there's two main ways that BERT can be used. So one way is by different language tasks by changing the input and output slightly. So for example, one example is question answering. So we feed it a question and then a paragraph that contains the answer to that question somewhere in there. Now the output of BERT will actually be what section of that text is actually the answer. So that's one way we can change the input and give us a different output. Now, BERT can actually, as we spoke about before, has encoders and, and ways of understanding language. So it could actually be used as a feature extractor. So essentially, we feed it words, and it's able to give us a numerical representation of those words, um, which is actually, which understands context because of how BERT is set up. Now, we feed the numerical representations to a classifier, and that is the other task. Very interesting. Could you maybe provide us with a real life example of when someone would actually use BERT and focusing on the feature extractor part? Let's say we have a customer support center. So our customer support center receives calls, emails, and social feeds. We'll assume that um, everything's converted to text format and they're all um, ingestible. So after we send it through BERT, BERT actually acts as the featureizer. So it turns those words into numbers. Then we feed those to different classifiers depending on what we want to classify. So for example, we can feed the output of BERT into a classifier, which ultimately gives us sentiment analysis. So we want to know if our customers who call in are happy with our service or unhappy, or maybe they're just neutral. Now, the second one, for example, that we can give the output of BERT to a classifier that tells us what business unit these customer support messages are for. For example, is it for the billing department? Is it for network support? These are just examples of different business units. They could also be different products that they get classified into. And one last example is maybe we want to avoid giving our customer service reps um, inappropriate messages. So BERT featureizes these words that come in and then classifies it as inappropriate and appropriate. So it basically flags the inappropriate messages and keeps them away from someone manually reviewing them. So these are basically some of the ways that you can use BERT. One way is by changing the input and getting a different output, or using BERT as a way to turn words into a numerical representation that are context aware. That's amazing. And we're already seeing so much of this happening. Like, for example, when you call Rogers um, and they're trying to redirect your call based on what you're saying you need help with. So it's so great to see um, how these models actually work in real life. Thanks for that example. And lastly, what are the limitations and future enhancements of BERT? Definitely. There have been so many advancements to BERT since it was first released by Google. Now, before I talk about some of the improvements, let me put BERT into a bit of context. So BERT is, as we've seen, a complex model. And it actually takes a lot of computational power. For example, the training resources to train the base version of BERT using eight V100 GPUs. These are very powerful GPUs. It took 12 days to train BERT. So this is very computationally intensive. So in general, you're probably not training BERT on a laptop and you'll probably look to some kind of cloud provider, whether it's Azure or otherwise, to be able to train these models and use it for your specific use case. But there's also another direction that people have tried to go in. So in terms of BERT, there are a few variations. So one is having quicker training speed. So there's distill BERT. So essentially, the advantage of distill BERT is it's four times less training time 
but there's 5% lower performance. So you have to decide if that's the trade-off that you're willing to take. Now, even on the other side, there's actually use cases and variants of BERT that are more accurate, but obviously take more training time. So there's Robert and then ExcelNet. So we've seen between two to 20% better performance, but it requires four times the training time. And finally, um, BERT has also some very use case or domain specific implementations. For example, BioBERT for biological text and understanding the words that are used in that sort of literature. So as we can see, there are many advancements. And in general, these are very powerful neural networks and powerful models that we can use for our use cases, whether that's um, a customer support center or question answering. But ultimately, they do take a lot of resources. So that's a consideration that we'll want to have in place when moving forward with a decision about whether or not these models are right for us. Obviously, this is still a widely developing space, and we continue to look forward to new developments and explore what that can mean for people. Thank you, Mitchell. It has been a pleasure having you here, and thank you for explaining the BERT model, how it works, use cases, and providing great real-life examples. Definitely. Thanks for having me, Veer. It's been great talking to you about BERT and sharing the knowledge that I had. Honestly, BERT gets me really excited because there's so much potential and so many possibilities of how it can be used. Now, we covered more of the technology during this conversation, but there's also a whole conversation about different use cases. And definitely always happy to chat about that. Absolutely. And the potential gets us so excited as well. Thank you again, Mitchell. Hopefully we can do this again soon. Bye for now. Definitely a beer. Yeah, we should definitely do this again. Looking forward to the next one. Thanks. Bye for now. And thank you for watching our first AI Briefs video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, then please check out ai.science for similar content. And again, don't forget to subscribe to ML Explained by Aggregate Intellect for more videos. Thank you for watching.